Before this last patch, the battle axe was incredibly stupidly OP for clearing group mobs like static dungeons as a solo player. So in this last patch, they reworked it, making it pretty much impossible to do the things that it used to do in terms of solo and group content. The problem is that the battle axe was never the only weapon that could do this, it was just the best weapon for doing it. In particular, the Shadow Caller has always been there, right next to it as an option for solo and group content, it's just classically been worse in every way to the Battle Axe, so heavily underused. But now with this recent patch, the Battle Axe is gone, and so it is the Shadow Caller's time to shine. So in this video, I'm going to show you how you can use the Shadow Caller to do the exact same things you're doing with the Battle Axe in the previous patch. So starting off with our build, similar to how the Battle Axe one was, there are a lot of options for every single slot. I'm just going to show you the example one that I used here in this video. If you want to, you can use the exact same build that you used with your Battle Axe set, as their playstyle is pretty much the same anyways. So along with your Shadow Collar, you're going to want to run a Mist Collar for your offhand, leather shoes such as I would suggest either the Shoes of Tenacity or the Mercenary Shoes for the stealth to help drop mob aggro, the Howlian Jacket as your chest piece, although you can also use Mercenary Jacket if you really want to, and for the helmet, I like to use Assassin Hood with the Shadow Collar as it has a 30 second cooldown E which is really helpful for your sustain to get it up more often. For cape, food, and potions, I was using a Limhurst cape in these clips here as I was just testing it, although I wasn't finding myself really having any mana issues, so you can really run a Thetford cape or Demon cape or any of your really other standard capes that you'd run off the Battle Axe, as well as either roasts or beef stews for your food, depending on if you want a faster clear or healthier clear, along with potions being poison potions for the bosses and stuff, or just invisibility potions to help you survive better if you get to them. For your abilities, it's going to depend on whether you're doing a boss or a group of mobs. So for single mobs like bosses, you want the first Q, the single target one, Q1, as well as Grudge on your W. But if you're doing a group of mobs, then you want Q2 for the AoE Q, as well as you have a bunch of options for the W, although I like Armor Piercer the best as it can increase the damage and therefore healing you get from your E ability if you combo them together. For your passive, go Energetic as it allows you to run no mana sustain in the rest of your build, being a really value option. For passives on your armor, since you're all leather, it's most efficient to split it up a little bit, so Helmet and Shoes go on Balanced Mind and your chest piece goes on Quick Thinker, or vice versa. So for playstyle, very quick to start, if you're wondering about how this stacks up to how the battle axe used to be, for example here I am doing a tier 7 static dungeon in the black zone with this shadow collar build and I'm running around 1500 IP on every piece of gear. Now that is a lot, but it happened to be a little bit more than I needed to be for most of these things. I didn't even really need to swap to my poisons or refreshing sprint ever, I just stayed on my safe options with invisibility potions and the invisibility on my shoes. So really, if you're aiming to do something like this with the tier 7 static dungeons in the black zone, you could probably get away with around 1400 IP, although I would suggest 1500 IP as it lets you be a little bit safer. For the rest of your playstyle, it's pretty much the exact same as the battle axe, you just sort of spam your abilities mindlessly. The only ones you really need to think about too much are your armor piercer and your E. If you are killing a group of mobs, as you really want to combo those together, as your E is a lifesteal, so the more damage you do with your E to the mobs, the more healing you will get from it. So you want to use your armor piercer and then your E. Otherwise, it's really just use all of your abilities and then reset it with assassin hood at a good time, and then just use them all again. The Shadow Caller can do all of the chests in Static Dungeons, similar to how the Battle Axe could. If you want to know more about that, I did a video on these chests in the Tier 7 Static Dungeons in the Black Zone, so I'll link that in the description, and you can check it out, as the information is the same for the Battle Axe as it is for the Shadow Caller. Anyways, that's it for this video. I hope you have fun still solo fame farming Static Dungeons and other group activities that SBI doesn't want you to fame farm solo, so abuse it until they finally nerf it so badly that you can't do it anymore. I will see you in the next video.